So let's dive directly into the topic of today's session, which is the analysis of microspores uh, for the H plant production. And to begin, I would like to set the base for the rest of the presentation by giving you a short definition of double haploids. So double haploids, also called TH, are uh, diploid plants where the two chromosome sets are identical copies of one another. This means that these plants are entirely homozygous, and this is obtained with the uh, duplication of the haploid genome. F double applied have become very popular uh, tools in plant breeding and genetic studies in the last years because they allow for a very quick generation of parental lines of, um, for genetic mapping and uh, for marker development. And there are several ways and pathways in which double uploads can be obtained. Two of them relate to an um, impaired uh, fertilization process. These are wide hybridization and parthenogenesis, whereas the other two um, derive from a deviation from the normal gamete development. We call it genogenesis, where the input material is the egg cell, whereas it's called androgenesis when the whole process starts with the microspore, the precursor of pollen. And today, I'm going to discuss about andro androgenesis. So the whole pollen development starts with the microspore, that it's in the first cell type to be uh, haploid, and it's in earlier stages as a central nucleus. As the cell development progresses, the nucleus is pushed to the side of the cell by the expansion of the vacuum. And then one of the next uh, macroscopic cytological events is an asymmetrical cell division that leads to the formation of a second nucleus, the generative nucleus. Uh, further down cell development towards pollen, an additional um, cell division occurs that leads to the formation of the trinuclear pollen grain, which is the structure responsible for fertilization. This is what happened normally in vitro. However, in, in vivo, sorry, in in vitro, um, during anther and microspore culture, if a stress is applied at a very specific uh, time point in the cell development, this uh, pathway that I've just shown you can be can change its course and be um, geared towards the development of embryos. One hint that this is going to happen is that instead of having an asymmetrical cell division, a symmetrical cell division will be occurring. And this leads to the formation of a two cell uh, proembryo. From that, a multicellular structure will form. And eventually, if all goes well, an embryo will develop. In practice, this looks like this. If you're starting from isolated microspores, you will have your microspores in culture. They will divide and form um, multicellular structures from among which embryos. The embryos can be cultured and from those um, plantlets be uh, regenerated. Remember that we started with an haploid cell type, therefore also the plantlets that we, we regenerated are haploid, unless a um, spontaneous chromosome duplication has happened. If, that not, if that's not the case, then uh, a chemical treatment will be applied, and finally, double haploid plants will have to be selected. Now, with my presentation, I want to show you several ways in which the technology of emphasis, impedance flow cytometry, can help the process of double haploid plant production, because as you have seen in this brief summary, it's a very complex process. So first, I will show you how, with the Amphase 32 you can create a map of the micro microspore um, development pathway in the form of scatter plots and how you can use it to um, estimate the developmental stage of the microspore in your routine process, be it uh, um, under um, under culture or microspore culture. Next, I will show you how you can use the AMPA C32 to test in parallel several treatments and thereby quickly optimize the protocol for obtainment of double haploids. And finally, I will show you um, how you can get a glimpse uh, of the culture progression and even uh, assess the embryo yield very early on in the whole culturing process. <clears throat> so let's start with chapter one. As I mentioned earlier briefly, um, the applying of uh, stress at the beginning um, of 
the process is very important and it's fundamental to switch from the gametophytic pathway to embryogenesis. However, one of the critical factors in the success of the switch is the developmental stage of the microspore at the time of the stress application. The microspore need to be at the intermediate late uninucleate phase or early binucleate in order for the switch to occur. Therefore, it makes sense to start the culture with the highest proportion possible of microspores that are able to perform the switch and therefore lead to embryos. And how can our technology facilitate this uh, task? Let me give you an example um, talking about wheat. So here you see a wheat um, spike. In wheat, the spike flowers over multiple days, and this is reflected in the maturation stage of pollen throughout the spike. You will find more developed uh, cells in the center of the spike, whereas at the bottom and at the top, you will find uh, earlier stages of um, pollen development. So if we were to extract and measure microspore extracted from the top to the center of the spike, you will see uh, scatter plots where the data points land in a different position um, of the plot. Something that will look like this. So you see um, uh, very early on, uh, if we really took the earlier stages, uh, we will have uh, a cloud that appears at very low amplitude reflecting a very small cell size. And further on, we will have um, an increase in size of the cell and also an increase in amplitude. Um, Further, and in these stages uh, are conferred by Davis staining. Further, you have the deep, uh, the, the, um, sorry, the binucleated the pollen grain, the immature trinucleated pollen grain, and finally uh, the mature trinucleated pollen as it is at release. So you see that spikelet by spikelet or bud by bud, depending on the species you're working with, you will see the pollen developmental pathway emerge from scatter plots that derive um, from the analysis of microspores extracted by increasing, from increasingly mature hunters. And once you have, and basically you have created a map of the pollen development. Once you have the map, what you can do is to design polygon uh, gates using one of the tools uh, commonly used for data analysis in Amphasoft, the software that runs our instrument, to delineate a certain area of the scatter plot where uh, the population of points that uh, correspond to a given stage is present and thereby be able to quantify it. So to operationalize a bit what I've been showing you so far, let me give you some example uh, with um, samples of extracted microspores. So in this first case, uh, you see the majority of the viable microspores, this is what the percentages above the squares refer to, viable microspores, are mostly present in the first two um, gates corresponding to late uninucleate and early binucleated uh, microspores. Whereas in this second example, the majority of the data points are in the binucleated polygon. This means that if you were to start a culture, um, you would want to choose the first example as a starting material, um, because this allows you to have a better yield in, in the process. Therefore, the Ampas 32 is a very suitable tool to uh, quickly select the best input material. Also, let me add here that genetic variation is known to create differences in uh, the bud size or the hunter size in different genotypes of the same species. So every time you work with the different genotypes, you have to sort of reassess what kind of um, starting material is the most suitable one for your culture. And with our instrument, you have a very easy tool to assess uh, the macrospores developmental stage and thereby gain a checkpoint for the start of the culture. But my um, scatter plots where the position of the data points corresponds to a, deep, uh, to a given developmental stage of the microspores are not only obtained in wheat, the example that I've shown you so far, but in a vast variety of plant species. And we always observe the sim a similar pattern of, um, in the scatter plots. Um, here I have three examples belonging to uh, species of three different families, Brassicasis, Solanasis, and Pumpkin. And in all cases, you can distinguish the developmental stages. So um, 
To be a little bit more technical here, I want to mention that the scattered plot will look slightly different depending on the plant species that you're working with, and also that there are other factors that influence that beside the species itself. And one of the major influences is given by the buffer in which the measurements are conducted. Um, it's a uh, probably very interesting for those of you working with isolated microspores, the fact that you can uh, run those measurements directly in the culture media. However, there might need some modification to that, some adjustments of the buffers, because for example, we need to provide enough ions to support a impedance uh, measurement. Um, so I suggest that if you want to start with this kind of analysis, you get in touch with us at support and we can organize a, a tailored training session and help you set up your system. So with this, I'm already at the end of the first chapter. So let's move on with the second one. Um, there are many factors that influence the viability of the microspores throughout the process. And obviously this is an influence on the yield in terms of uh, double haploid plants. Furthermore, it's well known and documented that there are certain species that respond much better than others to the in vitro culture conditions. And even genotypes within the same species have differently, uh, differences in how responsive they, they are uh, to uh, in vitro culturing. Therefore, producing double haploids may need a lot of optimization of the protocol uh, for, for that process. For example, to select the best uh, plant growth conditions for the donor plants of the microspores or for selecting the best medium or inductive treatment. So with the AMPASI32, you have a tool by which you can quickly assess the viability of the microspores, as well as you can do it with mature pollen. Here I show you an example of cauliflower pollen, where you can see that in this very um, isolate of microspores, we had 41% of viable cells. And uh, this you can obtain without any staining and microscopy assay, and can be performed at the start of the uh, process, as well as throughout the culture process. Also, what is interesting is that in the same measurement that uh, gives you the viability results, you also obtain cell concentration information, which can be used later on in steps such as plating at a given uh, density. So now in the next couple of minutes, I want to show you a few examples of how the emphasis technology has been used to optimize the DH production process and protocol. And uh, the examples that I'm going to show you derive from a recently published method, product, uh, method article uh, where you can find even more suggestions on how to optimize DH production protocols. So this is the example number one. After you have selected the material with the right developmental stage, you need to uh, sterilize, sterilize it, either buds or unders. However, the sterilizing agent is um, non, I mean, can have a profound effect on the viability of the microspores. So it's important to choose it wisely. In this example, several sterilizing agents were compared. We had 70% ethanol, 1% um, hydrogen peroxide and two different uh, chlorine uh, solutions, as well as an untreated sample that was performed just with um, distilled water. In all cases, the uh, buds or in green here, uh, or the anthers in yellow, were subjected to the treatment for 15 minutes before being washed three times and then uh, placed into measurement buffer for the extraction of the microspores and the measurement itself. So you see, if you have a tool uh, that allows you to measure uh, in very short time, less than one minute per measurement, including the data analysis, you can assess in parallel the effect of multiple steps and uh, in a quantitative way, and therefore uh, move on to the next step of your protocol because you have been able to optimize uh, that one under investigation. So this is the second example. I've been talking about uh, the importance of the inductive treatment already. And uh, I haven't though mentioned that some species prefer one uh, inductive treatment, for example, cold, other prefer a hot treatment, some other salvation and so on. And as for other parameters, also genotypes may uh, have variation. In this experiment, three induct inductive treatments were compared. These are the E and F and to cultural media. 
And um, in this scatter plot that derives from those uh, comparisons, uh, you see that the uh, points on the right of the vertical line are the, much, uh, the viable microspores. And you can clearly see that condition F uh, was the one that best preserved the viability of the microspores. So again, um, the AMFA C32 makes up for a very handy tool for comparison of multiple treatments at the same time. And um, this speeds up the development of the protocol and the opti optimization of it. Um, on this scatter plot, I also want to point your attention to the different distribution of data points compared to the example scatter plots that I showed you before. Uh, here, the data points have a rather high uh, amplitude uh, that corresponds to a rather high uh, cell volume, which is what you would expect from cells that are divided in culture, because actually I haven't mentioned that these microspores were analyzed after seven days from the onset of the culture. This scatter plot of uh, condition F also leads me, or let's say it, uh, it's a good transition to the next chapter of my presentation, where I will show you uh, how you can obtain a glimpse of the progress of the culture with the Amphasy 32 and even uh, be able to assess the embryo yield very early on. For this chapter, I'm going to briefly report uh, the results of the study that was performed at Vezhenov and that was described in much more detail yesterday by Muriel Filippo, our guest speaker. So in Muriel's lab, they have been using uh, IFC to characterize the behavior of microspores of wheat uh, before the inductive treatment and after induction. And they found that after induction, um, indeed the cells were perturbed in some ways because they uh, display the different appearance on the scatter plot. But one day after the onset of the culture, they realized that there was a completely new population forming, something that they had not observed in maturing pollen. And over time, as the culture progressed, the amount of cells present in this last quadrant of the scatter plot, which they named polygon three, um, increased. And in this scatter plot, the cells became or uh, gained a higher uh, amplitude and phase angle. And their amount after seven days correlated with the amount of embryos that they found after 30 days of culture, as they could observe uh, visually. So for the first time using IFC, they were able to predict at only seven days after the onset of the culture, the amount of um, uh, embryos that they would get at the end of the process, something that they were not able to do before uh, using traditional microscopy techniques. And this is mostly due to the limited uh, sample size that you can analyze by, analyze by microscopy, whereas with IFC, uh, you can have a much bigger sample size, more than hundreds of cells per measurement. And therefore, if you can assess very early on uh, whether your culture is going to lead to embryos and even quantify that roughly, um, you can adjust much better. For example, starting with a higher amount of input material or even changing condition uh, during the culturing process. So with this, I'm already at the end of my presentation, but let me summarize what I've been discussing with you so far. So I showed you that the AMPA Z32 is a very handy tool uh, when it comes to producing uh, double haploids. This is because you can assess the developmental stage of the microspores, and this makes uh, much easier to select the right input material in order to start with the best that you can. You can also use the AMPA Z32 for assessing the microspores viability and uh, thereby compare at the same time multiple treatments and refine your protocol. And finally, you can look at what's happening at your culture over time and even uh, be able to estimate the embryo yield. So altogether, the AMFOS 32 enables uh, for rabbit protocol fine tuning and can be applied for to multiple species. OK, so this was all for my presentation. I thank you for your attention, and I'm really happy to answer your questions. Thank you very much, Federica, for such a nice presentation. <clears throat> I have to say that indeed our attendees have been really, really busy asking plenty of questions. 
for this session. So let me start from taking, picking up some of them, like for example, are the species with which your technology does not work? So far, I have to say, probably we have been lucky, I don't know, but it always worked. Um, as I mentioned earlier, um, their, their plot might look a little bit different and you might need to refine the way you analyze cells. For example, uh, changing slightly the composition of the, butter, the buffer to have a better resolution. But we have been able to uh, see uh, differences in the scatter plot according to the developmental stage in which the uh, microspores were in, um, in all the species that we have been working with. Perfect. Maybe another one uh, related, another couple related with this one would be, is uh, your method able to estimate the developmental stage of, uh, of, mic of microspores in multiple genotypes of the same crop? Uh, are these stages specific polygons reproducible among different species of wheat? Yes, so the answer is that indeed you can assess the um, developmental stage across different genotypes and regarding the polygon gates, you might need slight modification of that, but the overall pathway or pattern of those polygons will apply to uh, across genotypes. In fact, the two examples that I show you were showed you where I even showed you the percentages of microspores derived from two different genotypes of wheat. One was winter wheat, the other one was spring wheat. Perfect. Thank you very much, Federica. Um, you mentioned that we can use our own culture buffer. How will I know if this is the case? Yeah, uh, so indeed, you can use your own culture buffer. Um, how will you know? Well, you will realize if the plot in the plots you have at all any data points uh, or not, and if the plots look familiar or not. First, uh, well, let's say the best way I would say is to get in touch with us. If you have already run, been running any experiment, maybe share a workspace with us so that we can have a look at where you're starting from. And if you haven't started at all, let me warn you about a couple of things. Um, most of the times the conductivity of the cultural media is uh, not high enough, so you don't have enough high ends to support a IFC measurement. Uh, in those cases, we will have to spike your buffer with our buffer in order to, to uh, supply the right amount of high ends. Uh, conversely, there also are cases in which the conductivity is too high to uh, get a very nice separation among population between populations, and in that case, we will have to dilute your buffer. Um, so it takes a little bit of uh, testing of different conditions in order uh, to find the most appropriate one. But it, it's not a very big effort. And uh, my suggestion is to get in touch with us and then we can help you um, starting from assessing where you are at. Perfect. Um, let me pick another one. Um, how can we contact you to set up our system yeah so easiest is that you send us an email at support at emphasis.com okay uh, another one do i necess necessarily need to start by building a map this would be my suggestion and that is because it's the easiest thing to do uh, I mean, if you want to estimate the developmental stage, I guess the person who asked this question was referring to that. So if you want to estimate the developmental stage of your microspores, the easiest would be that you create sort of a map. And by map, I mean um, scatter plots, so measurement uh, with the uh, emphasis 32, and in parallel uh, have some uh, cytological um, evidence of what your cell look like. In the best case, you can use DAPI, but it works also for the species where you where DAPI is a bit difficult because maybe it needs a long time for incubation. Um, building the map is uh, just to get you familiar with the appearance of the scatter plot uh, that you can better define uh, where to place the gates, for example. If creating a map in terms of um, scatter plots 
and in parallel uh, microscopy observation is not possible to you, anyway, get in contact with us. Maybe we have been working with that one species that you would like to analyze already in the past, and we are familiar with the appearance of the scatter plots. Um, and we can guide you on that. Exactly. Actually, the next question goes in that direction. Could you tell us or put some examples of which crops have uh, you performed this type uh, of experiments? Yeah, so, so it really, sorry, did you finish the question? Yes, 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 yes. yes. Yeah, it's actually very many crops in which we have performed uh, those kind of experiments. Definitely, we have been working with graminases, so wheat, rice, uh, barley, corn. We have been working with a lot of different brassicasis, uh, broccoli, cauliflower, raffinus, um, radish, uh, all seed rape, of course. We have been working with some solanasis, pepper and tomato, uh, and eggplant. We have been working with cucurbitasis as well, so pumpkin and cucumber. Um, probably so on, I should I shall say, probably I, yeah, these are the main ones though. Perfect, thank you very much. Uh, another question says, like, what is the, the ideal frequency to visualize pollen viability and mi microspores development at the stage? Yeah, so for pollen viability, most of the times we use uh, two different, I mean, for all the measurements we use in parallel, two different fre frequencies. For pollen viability, this is usually 2 and 18 megahertz. It might be that we, for, for the estimation of the microspore uh, developmental stages, we would change the second frequency. Instead of having 18, for example, we would go down to 12. And this is because usually uh, the microspores during the development uh, occupy much um, wider uh, phase angle. And if you are uh, too far, let's say at high, very high phase angles, um, so you risk to go over 360, which would complicate the data analysis. Therefore, by reducing the frequency, we uh, reduce the occurrence of those cases in which the uh, particles are detected up values higher than 360 degrees in phase. So um, short answer or let's say summarizing all of what I've said so far is that it depends a little bit on the species and also on uh, the buffers, for, for example, that is used for the measurement. Best is to, again, contact us. And we will ask you perhaps to uh, test a couple of conditions, including a couple of different frequencies. And then we can, uh, um, estimate, or let's say, a look at the data that you have produced and uh, um, indicate which one is the best frequency to use. And with that, also provide you a template for the subsequent measurements. Perfect. So you have probably answered this one, but just to make it more clear. Do this machine can replace microspore, microscope and DAPI to analyze microspore development? In, in fact, yes, it can. <laughs> and um, it, it makes it much less tedious because immediately after the analysis, you have the results. You don't have to wait that DAPI, uh, for example, penetrates the cells and you have a readout sometimes after even one day. Or, um, and you definitely don't have to count onto the microscope. Perfect, thank you very much. Uh, what's about our experience with flowers? Um, I suppose you intend ornamental species. Exactly. Um, in terms of microspores, to be honest, right now, I don't remember uh, whether we have analyzed any of the plant families uh, that make up ornamental flowers. However, I am relatively confident that it will work as well for those because among the species that we have been measuring, there hasn't been one where we couldn't assess the developmental stage so far. Exactly. The best would be, as you said already, that to contact us and we can give it a try for sure. Yeah. Um, so could you elaborate a little bit more on ploidy level determination? So I guess that since we are talking about microspores, um, the question refers to how many nuclei does a cell have? Um, 
So in that sense, um, I showed you earlier in this example of wheat that depending on the stage in which the microspore is at, um, the, the data points in the scatter plot will appear at different uh, position. And that has to do with the uh, cytosol composition of the cell and the membrane state, because uh, the, with the two frequencies, we have information regarding the cell volume and uh, the cytoplasm uh, conductivity. Um, if we're talking, let's say, moving away from microspores themselves, and uh, we want to discuss about polyemploidy, which in this case means how many chromosome set does a, a cell have? Well, that kind of analysis, we executed uh, looking at the amplitude of the data points uh, at the lower frequency, which was the lower frequency because at that frequency we have more information regarding cell volume. And we know that the size of pollen uh, correlates with the size of the nucleus, which in turn correlates with the number of chromosomes present in it. Perfect. Thank you very much, Federica. Um, let me, um, which minimal quantity of microspores do you need for a representative analysis? What do you think, Federica? So usually you have a good analysis if you have at least a thousand cells. Um, but if the, in the case we are analyzing um, um, induced cells, numbers go much, become much, much less. And we have been able to assess um, the induction state of the cells, even with, with less cells. What would be important in that case, it's that especially at the beginning, we have a couple of repetitions. It's not one shot and they cannot reproduce any more this uh, measurement. If we can run one or two measurements out of a culture or even different cultures, to be sure that the points that we are seeing um, show, I mean, appear in multiple plots, then this is also okay. So would say 500, 200 um, data points, the minimum, minimum. But let me add one thing here. Usually in those plots um, that derive from cells that have been induced, you, you have a lot of cells, a lot of data points, but only a few viable ones, which is normal. This is what you expect from cells that are in culture. They die over time and only a few remain alive and finally divide into embryos. So in that case, already the fact that we have uh, a high abundance of dead cells is a good starting point. We have a reference. And then what becomes a little bit more challenging, let's say, and that's why I said it's good to have uh, replicated measurements is uh, looking at the viable ones. But once we have established where to look at in the plot, then we get much more confidence in the results of the analysis. For sure. Thank you very much. Um, another question can be, will you develop Amphasoft templates for DH production? So I would say that we will develop uh, templates for each user and each uh, crop that they are working with. And this is because, as I mentioned earlier, depending on the buffer that you're using for uh, the analysis, the plot might look different and therefore we will have to change a little bit the parameters, for example, the frequency. So yes, it's possible to have templates for the analysis of, double, uh, of microspores, but uh, we would have to adjust it to individual cases. Thank you very much. Sorry, Gorka and Federica, but you know, if I appear, it means that we have time only for one more question. Thank you. Okay. Let me pick up maybe our last question. There we go. How do you know the stage of microspore, which the stage, uninucleate, binucleate, etc and compare with other methods or not? Yes, so indeed, that's what I mentioned already saying or referring to the map. The map is a comparison between the scatter plots in IFC and uh, the results that you obtain under the microscope. If you can do that correlation, if you can um, look at the scatter plot and look under the microscope, for example, with Dabi, but you don't need necessarily DAPI, an expert user can even assess the developmental stage by light microscopy, then you can build the confidence that uh, a cell or 
certain population at appearing at a given amplitude and phase um, represents a given developmental stage. So at the beginning, this is only happening at the beginning to set up the system, do this comparison between two different methods. Perfect, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Federica, for this very interesting and insightful presentation. And also thank you, Borca, for helping us with the questions. And I also want to thank the audience for being here today with us and for your questions. Don't worry if we didn't reply all of them because time is limited as we will need to start a new session. We will be contacting you in, in a few days. If you have doubts, also you can watch again the session for this. You will receive in the coming days a link. You can download, you can watch again, or you can also share it with your colleagues. And if still you have more questions, you can always send an email to us at info at emphasis.com. And now I would like to ask you two little favors. The first one will be that when we will close this webinar, you will see a survey, a questionnaire. It will take uh, only two minutes and it will help us to improve for the future. And the second favor is uh, to stay with us for the last session of this AMF Academy 2021. We will be closing this AMF Academy with a customer success story. We will see how the Red Boat University uses our AMF Z32 to study heat tolerance on tomato. So I think that this is a, an issue that it can be very interesting for all of you. And as said, if you have not registered, you can still go to our website, just a couple of clicks and you will receive the link. So see you there in the last session. Thank you very much.